Hey everyone, my name is Greg Lester and this is Game Audio Analysis and in this episode I'm going to show you how to create this water spell using only a hot water bottle. So let's get right into it. The first step of the process is to analyze the animation of the sound we are designing and then record lots of variations of our source material. Next up, we organize the sounds into similar categories so we will have an easier time finding what sound we are looking for when processing. Now I'll show you my personal approach I currently use to design sounds, which is by creating sonic building blocks that fit the general tone and pace of the animation, which I then assemble, layer and mix. This process pushes me to be more experimental and creative with my source material. Another benefit is that the use of this technique also yields a small sound library which you can then use for other sounds and projects. But now to the building blocks. I begin by setting up a parent track with some nested tracks beneath it, as well as a resampling track which will record the output of the tracks above. Then I layer a bunch of plugins on my parent track to create an interesting processing chain and drag and drop my source material into the nested ones. Having a parent with children tracks allows me to run the source material through the entire effect chain without duplicating it and then adding additional plugins, like a low pass filter on the nested tracks. This saves me a bunch of processing power and enables experimentation as you can easily drag tracks back and forth to find new and interesting results. Once I have a plugin chain that I like, I press record, modulate different parameters of the plugins, mute and unmute or interchange them and capture everything in the process. I then often resample these sounds by feeding the recorded files back into the plugin chain to process them once more. I save these plugin chains for later use to try out on different source material. The effects I use for the main plugin chain consist of a frequency echo, which is essentially a pitch modulated delay, a parametric and a semi-parametric EQ, a dynamic EQ, lots of compression, modulated filters, two phasers, saturation, and a chorus. I mixed and matched these in different combinations and settings to get a wide variety of source material. If you want a detailed breakdown of the entire process, then head over to my Patreon where you can watch the in-depth tutorial. Now that I've curated a nice little library of interesting sound blocks, I start with the assembly. First, I listen to the sounds and organize the ones I like into different categories under a master track. I then mute and unmute, add and delete, time stretch and edit the sound blocks until I'm happy with the result. This is a very iterative process where the sound slowly takes shape. And here are the various layers. As the name suggests, the first chain focuses around a very pure, natural, minimally processed water sound, while the surreal chain provides movement and the very distinct plop sound of the bubble popping. The melodic chain gives us more magical and tonal elements. And lastly, the base layer adds some depth. The last step is gluing all of the different layers together using some compression, pushing up some of the subtler details with multiband compression, taming the harsh frequencies with Soothe, which is a dynamic resonance suppressor, and lastly, some subtractive EQ to cut some of the piercing highs and get rid of the very low rumble. Here is a sound by itself. And here is a sound neatly fit into the game environment. As I've already mentioned, by using the building blocks technique, you'll create small sound libraries which you can use in future projects. Exporting all of these files can be a massive pain. However, there are a couple of tricks to save you lots of time. So here's my personal method of choice. First, I group all of the similar sounds on the same tracks and name each one according to the Universal Category System, which is a fine naming framework for sound design. You can find out more about it by following the link in the description. I personally prefer to have multiple sounds in one file as it's easier to drag and drop into a project and doesn't clutter up my library with hundreds of separate files. Then I open my export window and select stems for the export source and time region for the bounds. I also make sure to have the correct output directory set. For the file name, I add dollar sign track, which will automatically insert the track name, which describes the general category, along with the subcategory. 
After that, I have the microphone perspective, which in this case is close, along with the actual description of the sound. Lastly, I have the initials of my channel and the microphone I used to record the sound with if applicable. Then I select the track I want to export and voila, we have our sound library. You can grab the sound library that I created for this redesign along with a massive UI and mechanics library on Patreon. I upload new libraries with each of these videos, so definitely make sure to click the link. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments or reach me here and you know the rest. Big thank you to our existing patrons for supporting this channel and see you next episode.